This video is going to go out to Jenna I Lillian 97. And it's because of a comment she left on my channel. And I'm going to respond. Her comment is this. I think your post is out of jealousy that Beauty Crush is a successful YouTuber. This video is stupid and you're just trying to get attention. Okay. My video number one was not stupid and I'm not just trying to get attention. Alright. Now first of all, I'm going to hear this so I'm going to stop it right now. I have no doubt of Beauty Crush's successful ability to teach about beauty and makeup. She's a beautiful person. And she obviously knows a lot about makeup and hair and clothes and that kind of thing. She probably has a keen fashion sense. So I have no problem with that part of her channel. But what she is not is a clinical psychologist. She didn't go to university to study clinical psychology. Now you're probably saying to yourself, well, you're not a clinical psychologist either. And you're absolutely right. But what I am is something that she is not. I'm a data processor. Not an IT guy, a data processor. Now I will make the distinguishment in just a second, but bear with me. I got my data processing degree back in 1989. This was before high-speed internet. Now we had internet, no question about it, but it was not high speed. Most of the internet that we had back then was dial-up. Yes, and this caused a lot of problems because if you had only one phone line and you wanted to be on the internet, nobody could call you because you were on the internet. Okay? And so what happened was that half the time you had to stop your internet to go have somebody have a phone call and then you could get back on. What a pain that was. Not everybody could afford two or three phone lines. I certainly couldn't. It wasn't until the mid-1990s that we started having high-speed internet which didn't require a phone line. Okay? You say, well, some places had it. Some places did. But a lot of places did not. Just because the technology existed did not mean it was all worldwide. Okay? So data processors were people that actually worked at data processing centers or if they had a home-based business, they would do a lot of their computer work offline, then they would go online, etc., etc., etc. Right? Now, what's the difference between a data processor and an IT guy? Data processors take raw information and make it into something that is presentable. Pie charts, flow charts, bar charts, you name it. That's what we do. We make it into something that is actually readable. An IT guy then takes that data and makes it pretty. He's the kind of guy that would make the flowery little whatevers on the internet. You know, you see all the pictures and stuff. It makes it look pretty. That's the difference between a data processor and an IT guy. Data processors are highly analytical. Once you get past the prettiness and you become highly analytical, you're no longer an IT guy. You are a data processor. Now, I'm going to hear a lot of arguments about this, and I'm going to tell you, I got the degree in data processing a long time ago, so I'm establishing the rules. D-Pro people are very analytical. IT guys are not. It's that simple. If they want to argue with me, go right ahead. I will smash them to pieces. I've done a lot of database work myself and I consider myself a full-blown data processor. In the story. And I process a lot of information. I read very fast, I memorize very fast, and I learn very quickly. I am a living, breathing server. Okay? You always heard about these computer servers? I'm the living, breathing one. Period in the story. So, I discern a lot of things. And one of the things that I discern, beyond the fact that I'm not a highly popular channel, I know I'm not. I knew that when I first started putting videos up there. I knew I wasn't going to be highly popular, except for two classes of people. The unemployed, 
which desperately needs me right now because they have to have new job skills in order to get to their new jobs, and those facing bullyism who needed to get themselves as far away from bullies as popular, possible. So for those two groups of people, I'm a very popular person. Other than that, I don't seem to be very popular at all. So I know that. I know that right now. So this isn't a popularity contest. I am reach, reaching out for two very specific types of people. The unemployed and people facing bullyism. Now those two type of people understand what my channel is all about. I can certainly say right now, you didn't go to my main channel page and see all those playlists. Had you done so, you would have really understood all about me. But you didn't. So I give you an F. I'm a YouTube teacher. And so far you've gotten an F. Alright. My video was not stupid either and I will now prove how stupid my video was not. So you're now going to get yourself a second F. I'm going to keep giving you Fs until I am done with this presentation. Ever heard of social anxiety disorder? This is a crippling mental illness. And a lot of shy people are really suffering from social anxiety disorder. I know they give these statistics. I'm telling you those statistics are wrong. There are a lot more people suffering from social anxiety disorder than what they're reporting. And you know why? Because when you're suffering from social anxiety disorder, you're too afraid to go get help. There's a logical statement. You are so socially awkward that you don't even know how to get the help that you need for your life. So there are a lot more people suffering from social anxiety disorder than what they actually stay, say in the statistics. Because if you can't socialize with normal people, you certainly can't socialize with a clinical psychologist. Doesn't work that way. Think about it. It is a horrible mental illness. Beauty Crash failed to cover this in her dissertation. I did not. The only thing I didn't do was say the specific name social anxiety disorder. So now I'm going to say it. There is a disease called social anxiety disorder. It is crippling in the line of a mental disease. It can cause people not to be able to get jobs or hold jobs once they got them because they are too afraid to talk to their bosses about problems and situations. It leads to other social problems. They can't meet people. They can't get married. They can't have children because they don't know how to interact. It can lead to clinical depression, suicidal tendencies, and even death. So, if you want to research social anxiety disorder for yourself, you go right ahead. Because that, it, that disease validates everything I said in that video. That's why I said Beauty Crush was wrong. Had she got on the air and said, hey, a little bit of shyness may not be such a big problem, but if you start suffering from social anxiety disorder, you need to seek help immediately, because if you don't, it can cost you your life. I wouldn't have objected. As a matter of fact, until she made that shyness video, I didn't even contact her, because her area of expertise is beauty. My area of expertise is data processing. We're not going to we're not going to have much to say to each other until she came up with that. So she was wrong not to mention social anxiety disorder. And the worst part about it is that those who are suffering from social anxiety disorder are prime targets of bullies. Cyberbullyism, real life bullyism, that's where the clinical depression comes in. That's where the suicidal tendencies come in. That's where the death comes in. Why does somebody have to be put in a pine box before you guys realize how critical it is to break shyness? I don't even know why I had to make this video. You should have figured this out for yourself, but you didn't. You didn't do any research. You were absolutely wrong in putting that comment on my channel. And I'm calling you on it. That's an F. So there you are. 
And you say, well, what about NBC Revolution? You have brought that up. You went on a wild tangent. You betcha I went on a wild tangent because I've been getting so many unbelievable negative comments on that. I couldn't believe how many people could really believed. And, th and this is the thing. I have no problem with the first part of NBC Revolutions. I truly believe that one day the electricity could very easily go out. The internet could very easily go out. So I have no problem with that premise. I have no problem with that. I also have no problem with the survival skills that they tr they are trying to teach at the other side of NBC Revolutions. I think I think everybody should see that part. What I have a problem with is when they fade to black and they say 15 years later, this earth would not the, the inhabitants of this earth simply would not survive 15 years without electricity. We have become far too, too, too dependent on it. Think about this for a second. If the electricity goes off, there are no records economically of anything. All those records now are stored on computers. If you can't turn that computer on, you have no records of your economic status. Debts would be gone in a microsecond. But also your money would be valueless. Absolutely valueless. And how is the federal government supposed to communicate with you about the situation if they can't contact you in any electronic means whatsoever? Do you realize how long we get, it would take to get news from Washington? The government would be bro broke down in a week. Gone. Zip. Zero. FDA. Gone. Transportation Safety Administration. Whatever. All that would be gone. It would be absolute anarchy. Kidney patients would be dead in a week. Heart patients would be dead in a week. Diabetic patient people would be dead in a week. Why? Because insulin has to be refrigerated. Kidney people have to have dialysis and you can't run a dialysis machine without electricity. And, and heart patients and their pacemakers, gone. And all those pills that are manufactured, do you think they're going to manufacture that many pills? The supplies will run out within a week. And those people will be dead. Millions of people would die practically overnight. You're having surgery when the electricity goes off, you're dead. Instantly. It's over. You're going to die. That's what I'm trying to tell you people. The wildfires alone. You know, people used to cook with, with coal stoves and, and with wood stoves. The wood would be burned up by the wildfires because we've had such a massive drought. And do you realize how hard it would be to get that much coal? to that many people, the distribution networks would be shut down completely. America would be like that overnight. And when we exhaust our food supplies, okay, we ship food overseas. That's our commodities. Now, all those people that are dependent on the food that we ship out would starve to death. So they're starving to death. We're starving to death. We got hospitals that have turned into instant morgues. We've got diseases everywhere because of the aqueduct system that would no longer function. And you're telling me that people would be able to survive 15 years like that? Bull. 100% bull. And that's what I stated. I am standing up as a data processor and telling you people it would not be more than three years and the whole population of the whole earth would be wiped out. Instantly. And if you did your homework, you'd realize that. But people like you don't do your homework. That's why you don't realize stuff like this. I'm going to continue teaching on YouTube like a data processor should. And maybe someday you'll all wake up and you realize I was correct. If you want to live in your fantasy world, you go right ahead. One of these days, reality is going to hit you like a ting tong. And I'm going to be proven right. It won't be a happy day for me. But at least I'll know I was right. I'm not right on everything, but when I do get right on something, by golly, I back it up. And this I can back up. So, before you leave me comments like this, 
you might want to check out what I'm doing and realize for yourself that the few statements I do make are very correct. My grandfather always taught me to put up or shut up. Well, this time I'm putting up. I hate doing videos like this, but this is the only way I seem to be able to wake you people up. Get your head out of the cloud. Not the clouds, the cloud. The cloud, the, the same cloud where all these servers store all this information. Get your head out of there. Start using it for yourself. That's what this channel's been all about, is trying to get you to use your own brain. I'm trying to get you people to think. And before you go stand there saying, well, gee, uh, what goes on in the United States has nothing to do with Europe. Wrong again. Wrong again. You import materials and, and products from the United States. The United States goes down, our economy goes down, so does yours. Do the research. Do the math. You'll find out. Ted's right. If our economy goes down, so does yours. It's all interlinked. We are a global economy now. Get used to it. Whew. And now that I've said what I've intended to say, I'm going to cut this short. Thanks you to everybody who watched my video. And maybe we'll all be a little bit smarter. I'll tell you more in a future video, so stay tuned.